Welcome to Big Valley Grace Community Church to our online campus. I just want you to know that I, I celebrate with you wherever you are. You may be in your residence. That's where I am today. I'm in my residence. You may be at work. You may be driving. You may be at the gym, working out. I don't know where it is that God has you right now, but I want to celebrate with you that right now you can be where God has you and you can be there for Jesus Christ. Today, we're gonna enjoy some time in the scriptures today, and it's really an opportunity for me to share my heart with you about some things that God has been stirring within me personally for my own life, for my family, and for our church family. And I wanna encourage you, if you have a Bible, to take your Bible and turn to Acts chapter 19. We're gonna look at the first 10 verses today. We'll look at some other passages, but that's going to be the main passage that we look at today. And the big idea that we look at really would be that we'd understand that we're a citizen of heaven and a resident of earth. And this began to stir in me when the COVID-19 pandemic hit and the world went into quarantine and there was a stay at home order, especially here in this area. It was almost like the world was put in a bit of a timeout and there was some people who were working that was the, the, the minority of everyone. The majority of everyone really had to, to go home and figure out how to really operate really their entire lives from their residence. And I know for me, it, that meant that my family was home more together, which was really great. You know, my wife and I were home more together. My wife and I and our kids were home more together. And it was really good to be home more together. But it also brought up unique challenges of being home more together and that, you know, it would maybe put some, some new tensions in the family just because everyone's around each other more since at home we're doing family and at home in our residence we're doing work. And at home in our residence, my kids are doing school. And at home in our residence, we're even doing church. In fact, this is right where my family would do church uh, every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. And we would come and we would sit out here together and enjoy being a family in our residence and having church together. But it was also, since we were home so much, it kind of stirred in me just the desire to kind of get outside the house more, be in the backyard more, spend a lot of time back here thinking and praying about my own life, my family, about our church. It also put me out into the front yard and down the sidewalk and I began just walking through the neighborhood. Early mornings, I'd take my three-year-old daughter and put her in the stroller and we'd just start walking. Maybe, maybe walk a couple miles, maybe more than that. I would spend time listening to scripture, listening to books. It was amazing how many people I started to see doing the same thing in the neighborhood. As people are home more, they wanted to be outside in their neighborhood more and be out walking more. And so my daughter and I, every morning, we'd, we'd go out into the neighborhood and we'd you know, see if we could see any puppies. And my daughter loves to point out the puppies or the kitty cats and we would keep walking. And my daughter, because I would say hi to everyone, my daughter, my three-year-old daughter would start to wave and say hi to everyone that she saw as we'd walk around the neighborhood. And some interesting things happened. I began to meet neighbors that I've never met before and I've lived here for 10 years but I'd never seen these neighbors before. I began to meet people who are a part of our church family that I never knew I was neighbors with. They lived right down the street from me or they lived on the other side of the park from me. And a lot of conversations began to get stirred up that were really based in the neighborhood, based in the residence. And it made me think, you know, I, I sat back here in the backyard a lot and it made me think about just how I observe my home how I observe my residence. It made me think about my own property lines here. You know, in California, we kind of think property lines are a pretty big deal. And I don't know if your neighborhood has ever been like this, but I know that I can be a neighbor sometimes that's just to drive by and wave high and that's it kind of neighbor and kind of park at my house and then go into my house and spend time at my house and I can kind of just be there. But it made me think about um, really during this time, uh, just the different types of neighbors that I have. I have neighbors in my neighborhood where it's uh, one or two people who live in the home. I have neighbors in my neighborhood where it's, it's you know, multiple generations of families of the same family that's living in that home. And I've, I've got neighbors in my neighborhood where it's, it's really 
a uh, really large apartment complex and there's neighbors above each other and below each other, to the left of each other, to the right of each other. And because I was home more, I just got to see my neighbors more. I got to see the rhythms of my neighbor more. And, you know, one of the things uh, that God has really in my own personal life uh, done in me for a long time is really appreciated when someone would encourage me. God made me in such a way to where I've always really appreciated it when someone would encourage me. And because he made me that way to appreciate that, I, I've wanted to be that kind of person for others, that I would be the type of person who would encourage someone else. And I may not be the best at it at all times, but I know I have the desire to want to be an encouragement to one another. And it made me think about maybe the feeling that some might feel weak during this time, that some might feel weakened during this time, and how important it would be for us to really consider how could we encourage those who are feeling weak, and how could we really strengthen those who are feeling weak. And really, it made me think about the resident. How can we strengthen the resident? And as I continue to think about that more, you know, I realize as I would read scripture and just have scriptures come to my heart and my mind that it's not about us. It's not just about us being strengthened, but it's what happens in our life when we are strengthened, that we would become an influence to those around us, that, that I, as a, as a resident who is strengthened, would influence the residents around me, the residents who live around me. And that really began to make me consider what would it look like if I, as a resident who was strengthened in Jesus Christ, began to pour over the fence line, began to pour over the property lines, and I began to take it serious. How could I really be an encouragement and strengthen and make an influence for Jesus Christ with the residents who live in my neighborhood? And that kind of brings us to Acts chapter 19. And I hope that this passage is a great encouragement to you. I know it's been a real encouragement to me. And I hope that it also maybe sets up an opportunity for us to look at a, a framework for what God might want to stir in us as a church family. This is what Acts chapter 19 verses 1 through 10 says. And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. And there he found some disciples. And he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, into what then were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, and that is Jesus. And on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. And there were about 12 men in all. And he, Paul, entered the synagogue for three months and spoke boldly reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. But when some became stubborn and continued in unbelief, speaking evil of the way before the congregation, he, Paul, withdrew from them and took the disciples with him, reasoning daily in the hall of Tyrannus. And this continued for two years so that all the residents of Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. This passage has really, really been an encouragement to me as I think about what God might want to stir in our church family, in my family, and in my own life personally. And I would maybe phrase it this way, that we would want to see residents of earth transformed into residents of heaven. We'd want to see residents of earth transformed into citizens of heaven. As we're going to unpack this passage, we'll, we'll start from the beginning and we'll work our way through again. It says, and it happened when Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus, and there he found some disciples. So we're going to track with Paul here and kind of what happens when he meets this group of people in a city called Ephesus. Paul's life had been transformed 
by Jesus Christ, when Paul believed in Jesus Christ as his Lord and his Savior, and Paul is now seeking to influence those who are around him. He's seeking to influence others for Jesus Christ. And his hope is, is that Paul would win them to Jesus Christ, that they also would become Christians, that they would place their faith in Jesus, that they would believe in Jesus Christ. And so in verse two, it says that Paul began to ask them questions, these disciples that he found. He wanted to find out about them. What did they understand? He said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. You see, these folks were missing some really important information about salvation. And so here, Paul is seeking to win them for Christ. He continues to influence them with the truth about who Jesus Christ is. So he then asked them a follow-up question in verse three. He said, into what then were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. So Paul sees an opportunity here to explain the truth, to explain the truth of the gospel and to explain how to believe in Jesus Christ. And when Paul sees the opportunity, he takes full advantage of the opportunity. And I think he's an example to all of us in this moment. In verse four, it says, and Paul said, John, he begins to explain what John the Baptist did. John baptized with a baptism of repentance, telling people to believe in the one who was to come after him. That is Jesus. John the Baptist, his whole role was to point people to the Messiah, to point people to Jesus Christ. And so now that they know that there is the one that came after John, and that is Jesus, and they're to believe in that one, that Jesus, who's the Messiah. Now that these disciples have heard the truth, they now have the opportunity to respond, to respond to the gospel, to respond to the message of salvation in Jesus Christ and him alone by placing their faith in Jesus Christ. And that that is exactly what they do. They believe in Jesus Christ. And it says in verse five, that on hearing this, on hearing the truth, on hearing the gospel, that they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Right away, they take steps of obedience to outwardly proclaim their faith and their trust in Jesus. And they are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They hear the gospel, they believe in Jesus Christ, and right here, we see residents of earth transformed into citizens of heaven. And this first transformation, it is believe. Transformation number one, it's believe. I wanna encourage you, we, we are Big Valley Grace Community Church. That's our name. And grace is at the center of our name and grace is at the center of who we are. You could say that grace is our middle name. And the grace of God is what transforms lives. The grace of God is what's transformed my life. The grace of God is what's transformed my wife's life. The grace of God is what has transformed some of my children's lives. And I'm praying that the grace of God would transform all of my children's lives. The grace of God is what's transformed your life if you placed your faith in Jesus Christ. And when I look to the future for our church, church when, I, when I look out and I, I see what is the direction that we wanna go, I want you to know, I see residents of earth believing in Jesus Christ and becoming citizens of heaven. And I wanna invite you, I wanna invite you to see it too. I wanna invite you to see residents of earth transformed into citizens of heaven as together we believe. The passage goes on in verse six. It says, when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. You see, Jesus said that this type of thing was going to happen in John chapter seven, verses 37 through 39. I wanna read those for you. This is about Jesus. Jesus, he says, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. 
And whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this Jesus said about the spirit, about the Holy Spirit of God, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the spirit had not been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. And so what we have in this moment in Acts 19 is is we already have Jesus glorified. The resurrected, ascended Jesus Christ has been glorified by the Father in heaven. And the glorified Jesus Christ from heaven, he sends the Holy Spirit of God as a gift to those who believe. And in verse seven in Acts 19, it says that there was about 12 men in all that this occurred to. These 12 men, they thirsted. They were spiritually thirsty and they were thirsting for Jesus Christ. And they came to Jesus to drink and out of their hearts flowed rivers of living water. And the Holy Spirit of God is pouring out of their lives in a very public way. And it is impacting all the people around them. And here we see transformation number two, and it is influence. Transformation number two is influence. When a resident of earth believes in Jesus Christ and is transformed into a citizen of heaven, then Jesus gives the Holy Spirit of God as a gift that is alive within them, within that citizen of heaven, influencing for the glory of God, everyone around them. When I think of Big Valley Grace Community Church and I think, where is the future of where we're headed? What's the direction? What's the focus? When I look to the future, I want you to know that I see citizens of heaven influencing residents around them for Jesus Christ. And I wanna invite you to see it with me. I invite you to see residents of earth transformed into citizens of heaven as together we influence. The passage goes on in verse eight. It says, he, Paul entered the synagogue and for three months he spoke boldly, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. Something really powerful happens right here. They're in the synagogue. That would have been the the local church setting in that moment. And for three months, very faithfully, for three months, he is being bold and he's proclaiming the truth. It says that he is reasoning with them. He's dialoguing. He's having logical, rational conversations about the truth of God with these people. And something amazing happens. It says that he persuaded them about the kingdom of God. People came to know Jesus Christ in this moment. People began to place their faith in Jesus Christ in this moment because Paul shared the gospel with them and he gave them an opportunity to respond to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to the truth of the word of God. And here we see transformation number three occur and it is when Transformation three is win. It is about winning people for Jesus Christ, people coming to know Jesus Christ. You know, the mission of Big Valley Grace Community Church is to love God, to love people, and make disciples. Winning people for Jesus Christ is our mission. Love God, love people, and make disciples. We wanna win people for Jesus Christ. And when I think about the future of Big Valley Grace Community Church, when I think about the direction that we're headed, when I see what's ahead, I want you to know what I see. I see citizens of heaven winning people for Jesus Christ. And I wanna invite you to see it with me. I invite you to see residents of earth transformed into citizens of heaven as together we win. We win people for Jesus Christ. The passage continues in verse nine and it says, but when some became stubborn 
and continued in unbelief, speaking evil of the way before the congregation. He, Paul, withdrew from them and took the disciples with them, reasoning daily in the hall of Tyrannus. Let's walk through this first. It says that there was some that became stubborn. They continued in unbelief, that they began to speak evil of the way before the congregation. And so what happens here, we see that the disciples of Jesus Christ that Paul is working with, they actually have to leave the synagogue. They actually have to leave the, the place that was in that moment, what would be our equivalence of the local church setting, and they had to go somewhere else. They had to leave what they understood was the local church setting and they had to actually move somewhere else. The church, the people that make up the church, they had to move and go to a different location. And I think the parallel of what's happening right now with us in our world is amazing to see how similar the experience was for those who first believed in Jesus Christ that right away they had to make adjustments, right away they had to pivot gracefully and they actually had to go to a different location. And Paul, he makes the most of this because he takes the disciples with them and he, it says that he reasons daily with them. Paul sees this as a moment to invest in the disciples. This is a teaching moment. And I can imagine Paul with the disciples talking through what just happened, that they, in a sense, just got kicked out of the synagogue and they had to go somewhere else and figure out how to be the church in a new location. I can imagine him explaining things, walking through the passages of scripture that were on his heart, really building them up, really forming them and strengthening them as the church. And I think this is what Jesus did clearly in the gospels, we see Jesus pulling the disciples away time and time again and investing in them and building them up and really pouring in to their lives. And I think I would describe it, this kind of transformation, transformation number four, I describe it in this word, equip. Transformation number four is equip. We see Paul equipping the disciples in this moment. We see Jesus in his ministry time and time again, equipping his disciples. When we think about our church family, Big Valley Grace Community Church, we have what we call our core values. Our core values are worship. It's about loving God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We have a core value of serve. It's about loving our neighbor as ourselves. We have a core value of reach. It's about making disciples for Jesus Christ. We have a core value of connect. It's about the symbolism of being baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Jesus Christ and living in community with the body of Jesus Christ. We have a core value of grow. It's about being strengthened, being built up, learning, being in the word, being in prayer, learning all that Jesus commanded for us. And these come from the great commandment and the second great commandment and the great commission. We see that, that Jesus really outlined this for us in those places. We also see though that Paul, he took time to write a letter back to these disciples that he ministered to after he had spent time with them. And in the letter, it's a letter called Ephesians in the book, that is the Bible, in the letter, Ephesians chapter four, verse 12, Paul gives this challenge. He says, equip, equip, equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Paul says, you know, remember what I did with you? How I took you aside and I reasoned with you and I built you up. I want you to do the same thing. I want you to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. When I think about Big Valley Grace Community Church, when I think about our future, when I think about the direction we're heading, I want you to know what I see. I see citizens of heaven equipping the believers around them for Jesus Christ. And I wanna invite you. I wanna invite you to see it too. I invite you to see residents of earth transformed into citizens of heaven as together we equip 
we equip believers for Jesus Christ. We build up believers for Jesus Christ. We strengthen believers for Jesus Christ. The passage continues, the last verse that we're gonna look at in verse 10, it says, this continued for two years so that all the residents of Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. Paul was incredibly faithful to this task and he kept at it and he kept at it and he kept at it. And as he continued to equip believers, those believers began to influence others for Jesus Christ. And as those believers began to influence others for Jesus Christ, those believers that Paul was equipping, they began to win people for Jesus Christ also. And in this moment, we see an incredible explosion in the church because of the ministry that is very focused that Paul does here in Ephesus. I want you to imagine what this would look like now. I want you to imagine what this would look like in your residence, if disciples began to make disciples, who began to make disciples, who began to make disciples. Look, I know that you are located all over as you watch this. We're all located in different places and I want you to really think about where you are located and how powerful it would be if from where you are, God would use you to become a disciple maker, that you would make a disciple who would make another disciple who would make another disciple. And I want you to imagine how it would change your residence. I want you to imagine how it would change your neighborhood or the area in which you live. And this really brings us to transformation number five. And the word that comes to my mind in transformation number five is multiply. Transformation number five is multiply. You know, at Big Valley Grace Community Church, we are committed to multiplying disciples. We have been committed to multiplying disciples the entire time our church has existed. There have been churches that have been planted out of Big Valley Grace Community Church. In fact, right now we have uh, what we call campuses where we have multiple campuses. And the reason we have multiple campuses is because we wanna continue to multiply our influence in different areas for Jesus Christ. So if you could think of it this way, that in in our Modesto campus, we wanna really influence and multiply disciples in the north part of our county and beyond. And at our series campus, we wanna uh, really influence and multiply disciples from series in South County and beyond. And I wanna think about you right now on our online campus, that we wanna influence and multiply disciples from what I like to call our virtual county and beyond. We want to multiply disciples. And as I think about the future of Big Valley Grace Community Church, the direction that we're headed, where we're going, the focus, I want to encourage you with what I see. I see citizens of heaven multiplying disciples for Jesus Christ. And I wanna invite you to see it too. I invite you to see residents of earth transformed into citizens of heaven as together we multiply. You know, as I think about really, if I were to really kind of sum it all up, what is it that I see? What is it that I see for my own life? What is it I see for my family? What is it I see for our church family? Here's what I see. I see residents of earth transformed into citizens of heaven. Transformation number one is that people would believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus spoke to this. Jesus said in John eleven forty, 40, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? As we believe, we will glorify God together. Transformation number two is to influence, to influence for Jesus Christ. Jesus spoke to this too in John 15, eight. He says, by this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As we influence for Jesus Christ, we're gonna give glory to God. Transformation number three is to win for Jesus Christ. Jesus spoke about this too. In Matthew 5, 16, he says, let your light shine before others so they may see your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven. As we win people for Jesus Christ, we're gonna be glorifying God with our lives. Transformation number four is equip, equip 
for Jesus Christ. In John 17, 8, Jesus is praying to the Father and he says to the Father, I have given them the words that you gave me and they have received them. And then he says, I am glorified in them. As we equip people for Jesus Christ, we are gonna bring glory to God. And transformation number five is multiply for Jesus Christ. And Jesus spoke about this also in that very same prayer in John 17. He said, for those who will believe in me through their word. Jesus is talking about disciples who became disciples because other disciples made them disciples by sharing the gospel with them. Jesus says to the Father, I desire that those other disciples, those next generation disciples, that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory that you've given me. And then look at what Jesus says to the Father, Father, because you've loved me, you've loved me. It is based out of the love of God the Father. When we multiply disciples for Jesus Christ, we are going to bring glory to God. You know, Big Valley Grace Community Church has a purpose. We exist for a reason. And together, when we see residents of earth be transformed into citizens of heaven, we will accomplish our purpose together, which is to glorify God. And so church family, I invite you to come on a journey with me. Will you, will you come on a journey with me? That we'll head into the future with this direction to see residents of earth transformed into citizens of heaven and that together we would know in our own lives, in our family's life, and in our church family's life, that together we would bring glory to God. Father God, Lord, we want to tell you right now that we love you. We're so thankful for how much you love us. We love you because you first loved us. And Father God, I'm going to ask that you'd help us as individuals, as personal residents, Lord, as, as families, families who live together in a residence, and as an entire church who's scattered all around in lots of different residences. God, would you help us see what you see for our church family? Because it's our desire, Lord, that we would bring glory to you. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is both our Lord and our Savior. And all God's family said, amen.